You can now buy, sell, or even transfer a used Starlink internet kit. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. We're coming to the end of a little bit of Fireside. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. We're going to be talking about Starlink. I've gotten this question over the last couple of weeks, actually months, about buying a used Starlink kit or selling your Starlink kit, let's say on eBay or somewhere. Could you do it? Could you not? Can it be transferred? Well, the short answer to that is yes, it can. You can buy, sell, and transfer your Starlink kit to a third party, to someone else, and then they can register it under their own name. But there are some pitfalls in doing so. So today I'm going to show you exactly how to do it and then give you some tips and tricks and whatnot that will help you both buy and sell and transfer your Starlink. But before we get into this, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. They are 100% free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoy this content, even in the least, please consider giving it a thumbs up. That will be very, very helpful. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel as of yet, why the hell not? Subscribe and then click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Also, if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work that I put into these videos, there's a little thank you button down there if you want to use it. You can, if not, that's okay too. But what would even be better is if you just simply become a member of the channel. We would love to have you. Also, if you're looking for a VPN to secure your home or business internet, well, I'm currently using Pure VPN, and the nice folks over there gave me a link to share with you guys that would give you up to 80% off. So once again, if you're looking for a VPN to secure your data, doesn't matter if it is business or home, military grade, 256-bit encryption, port forwarding static IP, if you need any of this, check out Pure VPN. Once again, that link will be down below in the pinned comment as well as the description. So anyways, let's get into this. So for quite some time, I've been getting questions about Starlink and can you buy someone else's Starlink? Can you transfer Starlink? How do you do it? What do you need to know before doing so? And that's what we're going to cover today. So one of the things that you need to bear in mind is that only residential service as well as RV and best effort can be transferred to someone else. You cannot transfer currently either the maritime or the aviation. They are non-transferable. So once again, that is business, residential, as well as RV. That's what we're going to be covering today. Now, what you need to remember is that just because you bought someone else's used Starlink doesn't mean that you're going to be able to use that Starlink at your location. Remember, it all has to do with availability and capacity in your node or in your location at your address. All right. Whereas you can get, of course, RV as well as best effort coverage or best effort plans at your location, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be able to get business or residential at your location. So before you even consider buying a used Starlink kit, go to starlink.com forward slash map. Pull that up and then look at your location. Put in your address, check out, blow up the map, look in there to where you are located and see if residential and business service is available in that location or is it a waiting list location? Meaning that if you tried to get service in that location, you would be placed on a waiting list. Unless, once again, if you want to purchase RV or best effort coverage. So how exactly do you sell and transfer your Starlink internet? There's some folks out there that have just gotten fiber and they're like, ah, I don't really need Starlink anymore, so I want to get rid of it. How do I do it? Well, I'm glad you guys asked because that's what I'm going to tell you right now. So what you need to do first is you need to write down some data before you do anything, before you cancel anything, before you do anything. You need to write down your device ID as well as your serial number and your terminal ID. Now, you can find this in multiple places. And the problem that I have here is instead of Starlink putting it all in one place, you have to go to three different places to get the information. Now, maybe they do this for security reasons. I don't know. But 
Let's start out from the first one, which is your device ID. Now to get that device ID, you log into Starlink.com and then you get into your account portal. Once you log in, you see your Starlink service and next to it, you're gonna see a button that says manage. Click on manage and under the devices section, you're gonna write down that Starlink device ID. And it starts out with kit and then a whole bunch of numbers after it, write that down. The next thing that you need is that dish serial number. Now that cannot be gotten online anywhere or on your computer or on your app or anything like that. You actually have to go to the dish itself. On the bottom of that dish on the mass, you're gonna see a number, that serial number, write that down. It starts out like two, A, B, blah, blah, blah. It's this long. Write down the entire number. That is very, very important. Now, the last thing is your terminal ID. Now, to find that, you need to open up your Starlink app. Once you're on your Starlink app, click on settings, and then from settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom and click advanced. Now, once you're on the advanced screen, you're going to see device, Starlink, and router. You don't need the device. You don't need Starlink either. You need the router information. The Starlink ID you'll see starts out with UT. You don't want a UT number. Go below that to where it says router and you'll see ID colon router dash and a extremely long number. Write that down. A quick tip here is just simply take a screenshot of this advanced page and this way you'll have that number and you won't have to write it down and hope that you don't make a mistake. The next thing you need to do is cancel your service. So from your Starlink portal, you're gonna to go to your Starlinks and then click manage. And on the left-hand side, you're gonna see a button that says cancel service. When you click on that button, it's gonna ask you for the reason of cancellation, but also right underneath that, there'll be a check mark. It says, would you like to return your hardware? It is imperative that you uncheck that because you are not returning your hardware to SpaceX Starlink. You are going to sell that hardware. So once again, make sure you uncheck that. Then you hit confirm. Now there's one thing that's very important before you cancel your service, and that is that your service is 100% up to date, paid in full. And there is no orders that are outstanding that are being sent to you. You need to cancel any of those orders and you wanna make sure that your month is paid in full. There is a zero balance. If not, it's not going to let you cancel the service. Now I looked up over on SpaceX Starlink's FAC and I wanted to see what happens when you do cancel your service. Do you get money back? And the answer to that is no. So what this means is whatever remaining days that you have in that billing cycle that is paid up already, you are not going to get any of that money refunded to you. You basically lose that. So keep that in mind. Now, the next thing that you want to do before sending away your Starlink kit is do a factory reset on the router. This is very important to basically wipe it out clean. Now, there's two different methods of doing so. If you have a generation two like myself, you basically have to plug in, unplug, plug in, unplug, plug in, you get it, six times in a row. And on the sixth time, it will reboot and bring everything back to factory settings. Now, if you have a generation one, it's super simple. You just simply push the button on the bottom of the unit and the light will start blinking blue. Once it starts blinking blue, you can let go of the button and that is it. It will reset to factory default. Super easy. Starlink, why didn't you leave this on the Generation 2? It was just a button. How much is it going to cost you? Anyways, I digress. So the next thing you need to do is get this thing prepared to ship off. We want to make sure that the person that's buying this is getting all of the equipment. So that is the router, all of the cables, the dish, the stand that it came with, basically everything. And even better is if you have the original box, pack it all back together into the box because it's specifically designed for it and it's not gonna jiggle around or get messed up in transit. Because we know sometimes UPS and FedEx kind of kick boxes down the road to get to your location. I've seen it. Matter of fact, my Starlink, when it was delivered to me, was delivered at the end of my driveway about 10 feet in from the driveway, and the driveway is 180 feet long. So literally on the road is where my Starlink box was. That's where they delivered it. 
Luckily, it wasn't stolen. Now, remember, once you send that kit to the person who purchased it from you, you need to provide all that data that we wrote down earlier, which is the device ID, as well as the dish serial number and that terminal ID number. They need all of this information to be able to go to Starlink.com and now register or transfer it to them. So now that we know how to sell the dish, it's going to be very, very easy for you to buy one because you know all of the selling procedure. Now, remember from before, all of the stuff that we collected, these are the things that we're going to need when we're purchasing a Starlink kit from someone else. What are they? Once again, you need that Starlink device ID as well as the serial number and that terminal ID. What's nice, if the person that you're purchasing the Starlink kit from doesn't know where to find these three things, guess what? You do, because I just told you. So tell them where to find the device ID, the serial number as well as the terminal ID because you're going to need it. You also need to remind them that they need to pay their account in full prior to cancellation. Once it's paid in full, they need to cancel their account. That needs to be done before they are able to transfer it to you or you're able to transfer it to yourself. Now, make sure that all of the equipment and cables and dish, just like we did when we were sending it, is coming to you. You have to let them know. Don't leave anything out. The router, the dish, the cables, the actual mount, everything. You need it all. And what I would suggest is you get pictures, photographs of all of these items before they're packaged and then packaged inside the box. Once again, request them to use the original box when shipping the stuff off to you because it just simply makes sense. It's going to be more secure. And finally, when they do send it to you, ask that they get insurance when doing so. This way, if the thing gets lost in the mail or ends up broken and they did kick it down the street or like me, drop it off 10 feet from the road and someone stole it, well, you're like, eh, get your insurance money because, you know, I can't pay you for it. Anyways, once we have our new used Starling kit, how do we order service? So let's get right into that. We head over to starlink.com and we're going to put in our address and then hit order now. At this point, we're gonna select the service type that we're looking for. Are we looking for residential, business, RV, best effort? What are we looking for? You're going to select that. Remember, a used Starlink kit can only be transferred to a residential, business, RV, and best effort account, period. It cannot be moved to a maritime or aviation at all. Also, if your region or your node, your location is at capacity, you're not going to be able to get business or residential coverage. You're only going to be able to place a $99 deposit and then be placed onto a waiting list. So even though you bought this used Starlink, you're not going to be able to use it in that fashion, residential or business. Now, you can use it as an RV customer or best effort customer. Now, I'm not going to get into the speed differences or any differences between best effort RV and the residential and business. If you want more information about that, check over here. That is my Starlink playlist. I have about 110 plus videos all about Starlink. There's a lot of great information there, so check that out. Now, when the website asks you about your Starlink hardware, make sure you check I already have Starlink. What that means is you have the hardware already. Now, if that doesn't pop up, I already have Starlink. Well, it's kind of bad news. What that means is residential or business coverage or service is not available to you. It is at capacity in your location. What that means is, once again, you're going to have to put a $99 deposit and then wait or you're gonna to need to go back and change your service to RV or best effort. Now, the next thing the website's gonna ask you for is your device ID number or your terminal ID. That is the information or some of the information that you got from the third party that you purchased it from that sold you this used kit. Enter that in. And if you got this far, what this means is you're only going to now have to put in your billing address and your payment information, and that's about it. Your service will be immediately turned on, and you'll be able to surf the web. Now, remember, you can cancel service at any time. Now, let me give you a few tips, okay? Number one, make sure you go to starlink.com map. 
first and foremost, before anything, so you can dial in your expectations. Are you going to be able to get residential or business coverage at your location? If not, you need to know your options. Like I said before, number one, put a deposit down and then just simply wait on the waiting list. It could be a month, six months, a year, we don't know. The other option is you're going to have to get either RV coverage or best effort. These are a little bit different than the residential and business, especially when it comes to throughput or speeds, when there are times of congestion in the area. You need to bear that in mind. Also, like I said before, you want to get photographs of everything, the cables, the router, the dish, the mount, everything. It's just best practice, let's say. So you can see it and you know that they're not damaged. Also, if the party that you're purchasing the used Starlink from still has coverage, they haven't canceled it as of yet, have them go onto their phone and then log into the Starlink app. And from that app, you want to go to statistics and have them take a snapshot of that statistics page because now you're gonna be able to know if there's outages, how long the outages are, if there's any type of issues when it comes to latency. Let's say you look at latency and the minimum, like for me right now, my minimum latency is 27 milliseconds, maximum is 87, and my last is 34 milliseconds. Well, if you look at it and you're seeing latency of 100, 200, something that just doesn't make sense, well, you might not wanna buy it because there could be a problem with the unit. Just take a look at it and just make sure that it's functioning. Also, when you're purchasing from a marketplace like eBay or anyone else, try to get buyer protection. eBay provides it. I'm not sure if Facebook has anything, but a lot of these marketplaces have a means of purchasing or getting some type of buyer protection. Do that because these units are expensive. I bought mine for $499, whereas today I think they're $599. And if you go to eBay, some of the used units are going for in upwards of $1,500 and more because they're hard to come by. So it is a big investment. Make sure that you're getting some type of protection. Also, I've gotten some questions about warranty. How long is the warranty? Does the warranty transfer from party to party? Well, the short answer is yes it does transfer from party to party. Now, I went over to their website to see exactly what they say, the verbiage here. And what Starlink says is this, the warranty period for the Starlink kit is from the date of the original retail purchase from Starlink or its authorized reseller. The warranty period does not start over for kits sold or transferred by third parties. End users should verify that the Starlink kit is in working condition prior to purchasing from third parties. So how long is this warranty? Basically, if you have a high performance kit, what they state is the warranty is 24 months or 12 months once the kit is actually activated. So you get a year warranty once activated. If you have a standard kit like what I have, it is 12 months both ways. If you activate it or you don't activate it, once you get it, you have 12 months to use the kit and that is it. That's your warranty period, one year. That's all. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this interesting, helpful, educational, whatever. <laughs> if you have, once again, throw this video a thumbs up. That would be very, very helpful. And if you want more Starlink coverage, once again, check out that Starlink playlist. 110, 120 videos just on Starlink. Check that out. If you want to grab my book right over here, How to Create a Digital Fort Knox, Backing Up Your Digital Life, that book is currently on sale through Amazon or my website, jchristina.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click this little button over here and all those kind of things. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love y'all.